my name is Emanuel. I'm one of the instructors of wind turbine measurement techniques. Um, my name is Sascha Krummein. I'm uh, currently doing my master's in engineering science here at Technical University of Berlin. And I'm also an instructor um, in the course wind turbine measurement techniques. What you see behind is a great wind tunnel, Großer Windkanal, at Technical University of Berlin. It is a basically a, a closed ring where there's a fan inside and it accelerates the air and um, up to certain wind speeds. And basically we investigate, also compare, do some comparisons between the two rotors that we have available. So with this course, the students are measuring the power performance of the rotor at different operating points. And we have in this course um, two rotor types, which is one is a wooden rotor with two meter diameter, a hand carved rotor based on the plans of you pick it. And we have one 3D printed rotor, which is the result of a master thesis from Laurin Asfalk. This project was about finding an alternative method to produce a rotor blade. And we thought about doing it like with a 3D printer, because a 3D printer can um, produce more complex forms than you can carve out by hand with um, wood. So we tried to redesign a blade with 3D printing for enhanced performance. So the main question was, how can we optimize rotor blades on a small scale? And for this, 3D printing is an interesting option because it's an efficient way of printing rotor blades with different shapes, different infills, and then to test them in the wind tunnel. With the idea of coming up with designs that can somehow be used for big rotor blades too. So basically we start with an aerodynamic design with a lot of research to it. Then we went to the structural design, um, looking at infill and material. And we had a lot of iteration process that changing material, changing loads and more. But at the end we came out that we have to redesign. So we put a carbon fiber spar inside of it. And with that the whole thing was good enough. And then we went to the wind tunnel to make like real life aerodynamic tests. Testing also consisted of two different major parts. One part is a crash test. Is it strong enough if you bend it down? Does it crack the shell? That was the, the big question we did to answer. First with simulation, then with experiments. Once that was uh, clear that it's, that it's strong enough, we tested whether the aerodynamics work properly, whether this wind turbine can extract the energy from the wind, 3D printing in the laboratory environment, like where we are currently, of course it's really handy that you don't have like long like ordering times and manufacturing times. You can like design and manufacture on site. If you encounter an error, you want to redesign something, you're quite fast, your reaction time is quite, uh, quite fast. Additively manufactured parts like 3D printed parts are useful in the laboratory environment because you're not very limited in what you can do with them. Of course you have to keep some certain design aspects in mind, but generally you can create forms which would be a lot harder to manufacture on conventional machines and so on. So this is something that really helps us a lot to speed up the process for wind tunnel experiments. It's, for us it's really common to use that tool. And with other uh, 3D printing machines that we've looked at, it wasn't possible to print one whole blade in one piece. In the framework of this project, we just needed really one whole blade, one piece. And that was only possible with the, with the big work printers. 